What's going on, guys? It's me, your favorite forgotten print statement in your code base, uh, Ben Rogajan, aka the Seattle Data Guy. Today, I want to talk about what is the day to day of a data engineer like in terms of what do we do? What are our normal tasks that we take on on a day to day? And what do we try to accomplish that brings a business value? Sometimes this might not be that clear when we look at the tools that we use because it can seem like we use a lot of tools that data scientists use and software engineers use. So what differentiates us in tasks and what do our day-to-days look like in terms of what we do and what we try to accomplish for the business in order to create value on a day-to-day basis? As the role of data engineering becomes more prolific and important in businesses, because we're all trying to manage hundreds of data sources and thousands of data pipelines, depending on the company you work at, it's really important to kind of understand, you know, is this the right role for you? So let's kind of dive into what you're going to do from day to day to see if you might be interested into working as a data engineer. Now, obviously, regardless of the role that you're taking on, there are some things we can't avoid, like daily meetings. I know we'd all like to just delete those from our lives, but sadly, we're all going to be stuck with some form of meetings in order to align us with the rest of the business. So for many of us, we often start our day with some form of daily scrum, where we're often just talking about the work that we've done in the previous days, what might have blocked us on a day-to-day basis, and what we're going to be working on for the next few days. This just helps everyone understand what we're working on, as well as avoid anyone working on the same thing in order to understand, you know, how to make sure projects keep going forward. And that's, of course, just one of the many meetings you might be in. There's a lot of cross-functional meetings you're going to be in where you're talking with data scientists, data analysts, product managers, and people that are developing tooling and applications that you're now going to need to integrate and pull data for, as well as just pulling data for analysts who might need you to get some information for them, all cleaned up and ready so that they can do some form of analysis for their directors and managers. So sadly, although what we'd all like to do as data engineers is spend more time copy pasting from Stack Overflow, we're gonna be spending a lot of times, you know, interacting with people, conversing on what their needs are, helping them understand kind of what the limitations are of our data sets and what timing will be required in order to pull the next few data sets that they're asking for. Again, meetings are just an unavoidable evil that we just all need to spend time in, regardless of how much we think we need to spend more time at the keyboard doing work. It's what makes sure that everyone's doing the right work and not, you know, going off into the distance and coding into oblivion. Now, let's get to the fun stuff for what we actually like to do as data engineers. And the biggest thing we probably spend our time doing is building data pipelines. Now, once you've had your meetings, you kind of understand what your XFNs need, XFNs being cross-functional partners. You can now start diving into actually building the pipelines to get them the data that they need. One of the decision points you'll be making while you're on this whole path is what type of pipeline will you be building? Are you gonna be building a streaming pipeline or something that's more batch focused? And just as a quick aside for those of you who are unfamiliar, it's kind of what it sounds like. Streaming has to do with pipelines that are very live, often building pipelines that are just firing events directly into either a data lake or data warehouse if it's some form of event table. On the other hand, what we spend a lot of time doing, honestly, as data engineers is building batch pipelines, which run every hour, every day, at midnight, something that's very, again, batch-like where we're just doing all the rows that maybe have been populated in the last hour or day and then loading that into a table. Make sure we add things like slowly changing dimensions so that people can actually track the historical information over time, which is kind of one of those key things that people sometimes miss when they're building more complex data modeling. Which brings me to my next point, which is we often build these data pipelines in a way that helps us remodel the data that makes it very easy to understand and accessible for people like analysts and data scientists who are maybe not as familiar with things like SQL and thus you know, need a little bit of a simplified data set in order to actually access and interact with these data sets. And so we try to spend a lot of time, one, cleaning and pre-processing data in order to create some more data that is easier to access for people who maybe aren't as familiar with how you can manage and manipulate data. Again, this really depends on the company that you're working at. Data scientists and data analysts honestly have varying skill sets in terms of like their level of SQL, their ability to work with Pandas, and other tooling that is data manipulation based. So some people like to use things like Power BI and Tableau that essentially just allow you to drag and drop, while other people prefer using Excel to do something like Power Query. And you still have other people that like things like R and Pandas, and those people generally know a little more in data manipulation. So this kind of changes how you might be modeling your data. But more importantly, data modeling is about not only just making it maybe more accessible, but also doing things like deduplicating data, adding things like slowly changing dimensions that allow you to track 
information over history, which is very important when you're doing a lot of like sales reporting and you might want to capture the amount of like customers in a certain region. But if a customer moves, if you don't capture that historical information, you might just say that they've lived in whatever state they're currently living in rather than tracking that historical information over time. So a lot of what we do, whether it be remodeling into things like star schema and snowflake schema, which are two videos in themselves. And if you're wondering what those are, but I'll link a course below where you can learn about like basic data warehousing and modeling. So things like solely change dimensions, star schema, snowflake schema. But this is where we spend a lot of times in terms of data modeling in order to capture information in such a way that's one, easier to access and two, allows us to track historical information. With all these buildings, you've now built some data pipelines. You've kind of constructed some core data sets. One of the things you'll also run into is needing to optimize queries. Over time, maybe the queries that you've already built or maybe queries that people have been using tend to slow down because data grows. Or perhaps you've just got too granular data where you might need to aggregate some information that's being fed into a dashboard. And so you'll need to spend some time maybe creating the right indexes or kind of just restructuring data in such a way that is more optimal so that whoever is querying that data, you know that they can query it quickly depending on their use cases. And I think that's usually the kind of end result. Usually you focus on the data sets that are slow as well as highly impactful so a lot of people might be using it or maybe the people that are using it are high up in the company and you need these reports to load in you know two seconds and not 30 minutes so in those cases you might have to approach this look at the data set see if the data is just getting too large or maybe if you can like do things like partition data which means kind of breaking it down maybe archiving some of the older data or try to do other things like improve indexing depending on the kind of data system you're working with other options might also involve things like you know aggregating data if it doesn't matter in terms of how much they want to drill into it or really a whole host of other kind of tips and tricks you can kind of use to better optimize queries. And it really is about troubleshooting each kind of problem because each one is very unique. And now I know you think you've already had a very full day, right? You've probably had two hours of meetings, already spent two to three hours building pipelines, gone to lunch, maybe spent some time data modeling and you think that your day is over, but now you're gonna spend the rest of your time doing a ton of maintenance. So I like to tell people for every pipeline or data model that you create, you end up automatically creating multiple tasks in the future. And these tasks end up being things like pipelines failing because of upstream changes in an application, for example, that's very common. That's why a lot of companies are pushing into the automated connector space, things like Fivetran and Airbyte, which are both trying to fight into that area, just because of the fact that having to upkeep connectors is very expensive and time consuming. So if you could outsource that a bit into a third party, that's always kind of great. But that's what you'll be spending a lot of time doing is just making sure your connectors are up to date as things change upstream which can also lead to new columns being added to new connectors. So oftentimes a data scientist or an analyst who's been pulling this data forever might come to you and be like, hey, I noticed we have a new column. It's really important for my analysis that you also add this into our data set. And so now that also creates a kind of new task for you to do, along with making sure things like pipelines are still running as well as adding new columns you will spend a lot of time just doing general maintenance on code as things just update slowly over time. A big shift a lot of us have had to make over the last year is switching over to Python 3, finally, officially, as Python 2 has kind of deprecated any form of support. So that's been a big push. And so that's just a lot of time that you'll also be spending in terms of being a data engineer in your day to day. It's just making sure that you are keeping things running and keeping the lights on. Along with all of those tasks, there are other things that we do depending on the company that we're working at. For example, in many companies, we spend a lot of time productionizing uh, data scientists and data analysts SQL or code that is often developed in some sort of Jupyter notebook and doesn't necessarily allow other users to access that information because often that's just stored in some form of data frame that's not a consistent table and is easy to change if it's not well version controlled. And so this is not a very reproducible set of code. So you need to spend some time possibly productionizing it optimizing it and making sure it's accessible for more users. And whether that's analyst code or data scientist code, it's still about the same where you're just gonna be spending time kind of looking at their code, looking at what can be maybe transferred to SQL, looking at what can be put into tables and trying to understand if you need to now improve sources because sometimes people might pull sources from external locations that you now need to figure out, okay, how are we actually pulling this in in a repeatable fashion, depending on how often this data is used at the company. 
And like a pastor giving a sermon on Sunday, here's my third final point. Another thing that you'll spend a lot of time doing, especially if you work at a FANG, is interviewing. Interviewing just seems to be this common task that you're gonna spend a ton of time doing. If you work at a company that's trying to hire a ton of data engineers, I have easily done nearly or over 200 interviews myself in the last two years. And of course for FANGs, it's just very systematic where we're kind of just, you know, doing a certain set of interviews for each candidate. And we just have so many data engineers that we're trying to hire. It's just about constantly hiring and not really waiting until you need the exact position. So you will spend a good amount of your time, especially if you work at a FANG, interviewing and making sure people's skill sets are where you need them to be. As my second final point, if you are appreciating this video, I would love it if you could just take a moment to just smash that like button and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. I really enjoy all the support from everyone and we are kind of skyrocketing now to 20K and I look forward to kind of getting there with all of you with me. For my third final point, things that I didn't mention that a lot of data engineers are likely to do as well is not just building data pipelines, not just developing data models. There's a lot that we have to do in the world of kind of DevOps and data infrastructure, only in terms of the infrastructure that actually manages all the systems that we're actually running. You can think of the data pipeline kind of just more of this centerpiece and everything around that, that actually keeps it running, you know, gives us the ability to actually observe what's happening in the systems, as well as things like data quality checks and web UIs and all of this extra infrastructure that we need to kind of manage and keep up to date, takes up a lot of data engineering time. And that's why sometimes it feels like it takes us so long to even put out a few pipelines. This is honestly why I end up switching a lot of my clients to things like astronomer.io or manage workflows for Apache Airflow, because over time, it just becomes so hard to manage some of these systems that if you can get rid of some of the DevOps, uh, depending on how big your team is, I think that's usually great. But again, that depends on how big your team is and how much they can handle. Because if you've got one data engineer trying to manage 50 data sources, they're going to likely fail. But if you have a team of 10 people, then you can have some options in terms of what infrastructure you're actually taking on. You could also look at things like Netflix, where data engineers do a lot of software code, as well as places like Lyft. So depending on the role that you're in, you're likely to take on different problems. Although I mentioned some of the core things that we work on, like data engineering pipelines and modeling, there's so much more that data engineers do from a day to day besides just productionizing data scientist code or maintaining the code that currently exists. We're kind of just stuck pulling as much information as we can so that every analyst and data scientist and product manager that has a question can answer those questions quickly without feeling like they're stuck behind a wall of technology. So that's really one of the key roles that we play from a day to day, at least from what I see it, is we are kind of this middleman or emissary between the data and the applications that are storing it and the end users like analysts and data scientists so that they can actually quickly answer the questions that they have without feeling like they have to pull all of this data as well because it is so time consuming just to pull all of it in such a way that makes sure everyone can access it equally. And that's really where I think we spend a lot of our core time, regardless of the tools, regardless of the company, that's generally kind of our goals and outputs. Again, there are some uh, one-offs there where some people might be more focused on analytics and some people might be more focused on data infrastructure, but overall that is our day-to-day. -day. And I'd love to hear about your kind of day-to-days as a data engineer, or maybe as a data analyst. Are there some crossover points that you think you do already? Are there some things you wish you were taking on in your day-to-day -day as a data engineer or data analyst? If so, please comment below. And uh, again, do like and subscribe and I will see you next time. Goodbye.